Hello, and good afternoon from a gloriously sunny Los Angeles. I've just arrived here at the city's Union Station, having spent much of the day enjoying the weather down in Santa Monica. Anyway, that's enough sunbathing for now, as I am here to undertake my longest train journey to date. Over the course of the next five days, I'll be travelling with Amtrak through to the US capital, Washington DC, all the way over on the other side of the country. But first, let's get into the station and to the lounge, as I've got a fair few hours here still until the train leaves. I must say, I really do like the architecture here at Los Angeles Union Station. I particularly like the original ticket hall, which I believe is now hired out for events, and the very much still in use waiting room. It's a nice, almost chapel-esque interior with a touch of Art Deco. Anyway, as nice as the waiting room is, I'm off to go and sit in the lounge. Being such a long journey, I have, of course, booked one of Amtrak's sleeping car accommodations that they offer. A roomette, to be precise. I booked my ticket directly with Amtrak. While prices can vary, I paid $1,350 for a one-way ticket for two people sharing a roomette. All sleeping car passengers can use the lounge while they wait for their train, as well as do as we did and leave your bags there for free, should you want to go off and explore the city. Anyway, while the main part of the station is very pleasing on the eye, the lounge is anything but. That said though, while horribly dated and the food and drink offering leaves a lot to be desired, it is a fairly comfortable and relaxed place to kick back while you wait for your train. At long last, the time comes to head up to the platform to board the first train of the trip, which we'll be spending three nights on, taking us as far as Chicago. The first train that we'll be taking is train number 422, the Texas Eagle, which departs Los Angeles for the Midwest tri-weekly. There is also a quicker service that runs daily in the form of the Southwest Chief. However, as I had taken this trip in the past, I thought I'd mix things up a bit on this one. The Texas Eagle is actually the longest train service that Amtrak runs, taking some 61 hours and 44 minutes to reach Chicago. For reference, the Southwest Chief clocks in at just under 43 hours. Anyway, the platforms at Los Angeles Union Station are very easy to find and can be accessed by this passageway. Now, the lounge is quite a walk away from the platforms, so Amtrak offer people called Red Caps to assist with helping passengers to the platform should you require this. Required regardless of vaccination status on board Metrolink trains and at stations. And here comes our train from the depot just now. As is the case with pretty much all long distance trains west of Chicago, Amtrak uses their iconic double decker superliner coaches on this route. Only some of these coaches are coming with us to Illinois with the front portion of the train actually splitting away from us about halfway into the trip and continuing on to New Orleans as train number two, the Sunset Limited. Anyway, I'm tired, so let's get on board and get to bed. Okay, thank you. Room two. With the late departure time, I certainly appreciated that the beds in the roomette were already made up prior to us boarding the train. By the way, if you want a full in-depth look at this train, including a comprehensive room tour, be sure to check out the video in the top right corner of the screen now. Right, just before we depart, let's see where this trip across the US will be taking us. As I mentioned earlier, we'll spend the first three nights of the trip aboard the Texas Eagle, which will see us travelling through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, and finally into Illinois, and Chicago's Union Station. We'll then have a few hours in Chicago before boarding our connecting train to Washington DC, which will see us leaving Illinois and heading through Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Maryland before finally arriving into the capital's Union Station. 
Our total scheduled travel time is 84 hours and 5 minutes and will see us covering a distance of 3,508 miles or 5,646 kilometres. And we depart on our cross-country adventure bang on 10pm. As it was already rather late and I was very tired, I pretty much went straight to sleep not long after departing LA. The following morning, we awake in the sun-baked deserts of Arizona. Anyway, first order of the day is to head to the dining car and get some breakfast. As we head there, let's just take a look at what the rest of the train has to offer. On the lower level of each sleeping car, you'll find toilets as well as a communal shower for the roomette passengers to use. They were all generally kept in good nick throughout the trip, being cleaned regularly. Note that there is also one toilet on the upper level, so you don't have to go traipsing downstairs should you wake up needing to go in the night. If you're running on a bit of a budget, or you just don't want to fork out for the sleeping car accommodation, it is possible to do this entire journey in coach. While it is undeniably much cheaper than a roomette, take it from someone who has done a cross-country trip in coach in the past, your experience and level of comfort is going to hinge quite heavily on how busy the train is. If it's not too busy, it's certainly possible to be quite comfortable, but a really long journey such as this would be unbearable on a busy service, which this one was for much of the trip. Then we have the Sightseer lounge car which has a small cafe on the lower level. This car is open to all passengers. Then we have the dining car, where sleeping car passengers are served restaurant style meals, which are included in the price of your ticket, minus gratuities of course. Prior to the pandemic, it was possible for coach passengers to pay to dine here, were there to be space available. However, for some reason, this still hasn't been reinstated. If you're curious, you'll find all menus for all meals in the description below. For my first breakfast, I went for the Railroad French Toast, which was really good. Anyway, we're now just pulling into Tucson, Arizona. This will be the first of many smoke or fresh air stops throughout our trip, where the train stops for an extended period, allowing passengers to step off the train for a breath of fresh air, or if you prefer your air to be less fresh, you can also smoke at these stops if you wish to do so. These smoke stops can range anywhere from 5 minutes up to about 45 minutes at stops like Tucson, where the locomotives are also refuelled. The scenery for much of the first day of the Texas Eagle pretty much remains the same as the many miles gradually roll on by as we cross the arid deserts as we head towards Texas. Last of what? Eventually, lunchtime comes around. As I've mentioned in previous Amtrak videos, this is a bit like a watered down version of dinner. By far, the highlight of the first full day is when the train passes within quite literally a stone's throw of the US-Mexico border. We follow the course of the border for quite some time as we close in on our first stop in Texas, El Paso. This also marks more or less the beginning of well over 24 hours that we'll spend crossing Texas, which is, of course, the largest of the lower 48 states.
As the day finally draws to a close, it's time for the first dinner service of the trip. Dinner consists of a three course meal, and this is the only meal that you can enjoy an alcoholic drink without incurring an additional charge. While the scenery on the Texas Eagle may be nowhere near as grand as the likes of the California Zephyr or the Southwest Chief, the sunsets are still all the same, just as spectacular. After a brief fresh air stop in Alpine, it's time to turn in once more. On the morning of day three, you'll find that the nice dining car and sightseer lounge from the day before are no more, with those two coaches continuing with the New Orleans portion of the train. Instead, we now get this half cafe, half first class lounge car, which is also where our meals will now be served. The quality of the meals on offer also takes a massive hit too. Gone are the freshly cooked meals of the previous day. In their place, we get these lacklustre pre-packaged steamed meals, which Amtrak calls flexible dining. While they can taste anywhere between disgusting and just about good, considering how expensive tickets are, serving something that's comparable to a microwave meal that you could pick up for a few dollars really doesn't cut it for me. Anyway, we're now just pulling it into our first fresh air stop of the day, Austin. Day 3 sees us making quite a number of stops in some pretty major cities, the next of these being Fort Worth. Fort Worth is shortly thereafter followed by Dallas. One upside of flexible dining is that it's possible to have your meals delivered to your room, which we took advantage of for dinner. Finally, around quarter to nine in the evening, we arrive in Texarkana, finally marking an end to our time in the Lone Star State. The Texas-Arkansas state line runs perpendicular to the platform, about halfway down the length of the train. After Texarkana, it's time to turn in for our final night aboard the Texas Eagle. The morning of the fourth day saw us held up on the banks of the Mississippi River for well over an hour, due to congestion caused by a large number of freight trains in the area. Eventually, 
we do pull into our next stop of St. Louis, Missouri, where an extra coach car is added to the train ahead of our final little run into Chicago, where we're scheduled to arrive at just before quarter to two this afternoon, giving us around seven hours left to run on this leg of the trip. After a pretty unremarkable canter from St. Louis, we finally find ourselves trundling into Chicago's Union Station. We arrive at about 25 past 3, meaning we're 90 minutes late. However, not to worry, as our connecting train to Washington DC isn't scheduled to leave until 20 to 7, meaning we still have over 3 hours to wait here in Chicago. By the way, if you're worried about missing your connecting train due to a delay, then don't because Amtrak guarantees all connections on long distance trains, providing there's at least 90 minutes between your first train arriving and your second train leaving. After checking out the spectacular Great Hall, it's time to head and kick back in the lounge while we wait for boarding. The lounge in Chicago features the same underwhelming food offering that was in Los Angeles, but at least the lounge here is quite a bit nicer and considerably bigger, being spread out over two levels. Eventually, the time comes to head down to the platforms once more to board the train for the last night of the trip. As I touched on earlier, the service that will take us from Illinois to the capital is the aptly named train number 30, the Capital Limited, which departs Chicago daily at 6.40pm for the 17 hour and 25 minute long journey to Washington DC. In terms of the layout of the train, the roomettes and the coaches are pretty much all the same, so I won't bore you with showing you them all again. The dining car on this train is the same as the one we had for the last two days of the Texas Eagle and there's no sightseer lounge on this train, which is a shame as there was when I did this train a few years ago. Anyway, we depart Chicago on the last night of our trip on time. After one last spectacular sunset, dinner is once again served. Again, unfortunately the Capital Limited features flexible dining. However, this did once again enable us to eat in our room. After dinner, it's time to turn in for one final time. On the morning of the final day, we awake to find ourselves amongst the Appalachian Mountains of Maryland. In my opinion, 
the final day was actually the best in terms of the scenery. So, reflecting as we approach the end of our five day journey, personally, I think if I were to do this again, while I would still utilise the Capital Limited, I would take the Southwest Chief instead of the Texas Eagle for the Los Angeles to Chicago leg. Not only is the Southwest Chief a quicker, more direct train, taking two nights instead of three, but it also has the advantage of operating daily and is considerably more scenic in my opinion. But, as with every Amtrak long distance train journey I've taken, I do think this was a worthwhile experience, and I did, after all, get to tick off America's longest single train journey along the way. Anyway, those are just my thoughts, and I am, as always, curious to hear what you made of this trip in the comments below. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are now arriving at Washington, D.C. Union Station. Please take the time now to gather your belongings from the other tracks above your head as well as around your seats. Please remember to use all handrails and guardrails. And we finally pull into Washington, D.C.'s Union Station, 85 minutes late at half past two, giving us a total travel time of 85 hours and 36 minutes from California to the capital. With that, I'm off to go and sleep in a stationary bed. However, in the meantime, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, as all of them actions help me out immensely. Special thanks, as always, to my fantastic patrons and channel members. If you want to join them in supporting the channel from just $1 per month, then you'll find the relevant links in the description below. Anyway, that's all from me. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all next Friday.